Family and friends, top of the day is Friday and you still ain't got no realtor. To bring you back up to speed on the topic, I'll briefly provide points from last Friday's video. On Monday, we had a beautiful mind. I hope you all enjoyed learning about John Nash and overcoming mental illness. We were discussing Robert's rules and parliamentary procedures as well. Do I have a motion? We spoke about the Reconstruction Era and the three amendments associated with this period of time. The Reconstruction Era was the years directly following the Civil War. The chronological dates for this period are 1865 to 1877. Remember, General Robert published his first book on Robert's rules in 1876, so it's important to understand the temper of the times in all of this. During this period, the country struggled with determining the legal status of African Americans and reintegrating the Union and Confederate States. Again, there were three amendments tied to this era, the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments, were all attempts to address some of the troubling issues faced as a country. In our last video, we spoke about the 13th Amendment, which abolished slavery. The exception to this amendment was, and still is, when it applies to those who commit crimes. So, our whole prison system is essentially slavery. This is still a fact to this day. It's actually called institutionalized slavery to make it sound better. Let me be clear so there won't be any confusion. Anytime anyone is held against their own free will, it's slavery. That's why you read your rights prior to being taken into custody. It's also the reason we're presumptively innocent into proven guilty. It's at this time the courts will determine if you will maintain your freedom or be punished to human servitude under the 13th Amendment. If we are truly innocent and to proven guilty, why are we locked up into our court date? I'm not saying we should have an anarchy, but being locked up has mental, financial, and physical consequences. For instance, a term called vagrancy was a crime during the Reconstruction era. Vagrancy makes it a crime for a person to wander from place to place or to be homeless. So all slaves lived on plantations up until this point, and now to essentially gain freedom, they must find a new place to stay. If they remained on the plantation, they would have still been enslaved. I can use this as an opportunity to talk about Harriet Tubman and the Underground Railroad, as well as the increase in migration to the North, but to stay on track, I'll just say it's a noteworthy point. Let's directly tie this concept into real estate and property ownership. The 14th Amendment granted citizenship to all persons born or naturalized in the United States, even former slaves. It stated that no state shall deprive any citizen the pursuit of life, liberty, and property. That's right, the pursuit of happiness is actually property. Stay with me. If the 13th Amendment abolished slavery and the 14th Amendment granted citizenship to all, why wasn't property given in the deal? Was property given and we didn't know it? What does 40 acres and a mule really mean? Because it seems like African Americans never got it. The key takeaway from the 14th Amendment is that it granted citizenship to everyone. If this were true, why would we need to integrate schools and businesses? Were we better off segregated? These are the questions that come to mind when I stroll down Two Notch Road. <laughs> I mean, history lane. The real reason the 14th Amendment failed is because although African Americans were granted citizenship, due to fear of their lives, they could not fully execute being citizens in the US. Once again, I move that we table this discussion until next Friday, August 12th. We'll jump into the 15th Amendment and conclude this trilogy of Robert's Rules. Check out General Contracting on Monday for motivation. Happy to help. Make it a great day.